So over the years, there's always been a few things that I've encountered that have absolutely blown my mind. And when I first ran into 3D printing, the first time I saw a laser cutter, shoot, the first time I used a table saw just opened me up to a whole nother world. But more recently, my mind has been blown by AI art, where basically you just type in a bunch of different words and then out the other end pops an image. And these images are wild. They can look like they're an actual photo that someone takes. They can look like they're stylized or the concept art. You can kind of pretty much make whatever you want. And then like a month ago, I heard about Stable Diffusion, which is a open source version of this AI art. So in this video, I want to show you a couple really easy ways that you can get into it, as well as some potential use cases that I could see makers like us actually using this in our work. So the first example is just gonna be a website. And this is from Stable Diffusion. This is actually their GitHub project, but when you hit the link below, it actually gives you a little demo that you can play around with. And it's pretty simple. You can just enter a prompt and generate an image. It gives you a couple examples right down here, and I'm actually going to use one of these. And you can see we already are getting just images straight up generated. And the one thing I've actually done a lot of is put in a real person. I've been using Harrison Ford because Han Solo and Indiana Jones and why not? And these are just generated images of Harrison Ford. I mean, when you get in there, you can definitely tell this isn't real, but at a glancing shot, you might be like, oh, this is like him from like Comic-Con, I guess that's the logo in the background. But what's crazy is when you start to add in more things to this prompt. So in my case, I've always wanted to see what Harrison Ford would look like if he was an actual Jedi versus Han Solo. And so then you start to get these like almost screen grabs from the old original trilogy Star Wars movies. So these aren't like a current photograph. Uh, some of them have kind of the uh, the painting, the Ralph McQuarrie style feel to them. Now, honestly, an even better site that you can check out is called Lexica. And what's nice about this is it not only gives you a ton of just different examples, and you can actually hover over it and you can see the prompt that people use to generate it. And this is a really good spot to learn kind of the different ways that people are putting these things together. But to use this one as an example, you can see you got a Harry Potter portrait in Cyberpunk, comma, and these are gonna be the things that kind of define how this is generated. What I like about this is not only can you look at things, you can also generate things as well. So I believe it's also built on Stable Diffusion, um, but you can put in your own prompts. So I'm gonna do Harrison Ford again here. So Harrison Ford. And you can see there's going to be different settings and these are going to apply to a lot of the different things that you're playing around with. Basically guidance, the higher this value is, the closer it's going to try to get to being exactly your prompt versus lower. It's going to have a lot more artistic license and kind of play around with different things for you. But you can see still we're kind of getting screen grabs from looks like the original trilogy. And as you scroll down, it's going to give you a lot more generations of things that look similar or using kind of the similar prompts. Here is a wide shot of Jeff Bridges from the Big Lebowski as a Jedi bowling in Star Wars. And you can see it's also giving you a bunch of different variations as well. There are definitely some goofy things that are gonna happen. Hands are like one of the big ones of that, but you're gonna get some really cool results. So I'm actually gonna jump over to my history. I tried to do Harrison Ford as Thor. I didn't get as great results. And then I played around with having Michael Scott slash Steve Carell as the captain of the Starship Enterprise. And so having like a movie poster, which for me, Steve Carell isn't quite locked in as well as some of the other celebrities that you might have been seeing. And then when I did this, this absolutely blew my mind. This is happy to be on a sailboat in the middle of the ocean. I think I just saw this prompt from somebody else. And I mean, these look like actual photographs of a sailboat in the middle of the ocean. And last but not least, I also threw in Harrison Ford if he was basically the captain of the Starship Enterprise. And there's one of him looking very John Kirk-like. Okay, so those are two versions that just live online. The next one is a Mac app called Diffusion B, and it's gonna work pretty similar. I've also found that Brad Pitt is a good person to test out Brad Pitt as the Hulk. I am not quite getting the results that I was thinking, but this one actually is getting kind of close, even though it doesn't have his full face and like the Hulk has like a mask on, but you can definitely tell that's Brad Pitt underneath. But a few things to point out are especially when I did Brad Pitt as Thor. I mean, this looks pretty insane. And I did find actually Steve Carell slash Michael Scott was giving me a little bit better results, especially this one. So this is just him as the Hulk. And then this one just looks absolutely insane. I don't even know what's going on here, but I love the hair is probably my, my favorite part. 
And here are a bunch more examples of Harrison Ford as a Jedi in different styles. But really what I want you to take from this is there's just a lot of stuff that you can do. And I definitely encourage you guys to play around with it and see what you can make. Now maybe you are playing around with all these images, but you're wanting to figure out a place to display them that isn't just on Instagram or TikTok. Then be sure and check out today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one solution to create your brand and website online. It was actually the very first service I used way back in the day when I set up my first website to help make kids books. And if I had something like Stable Diffusion, I could generate those graphics way faster. Because with Squarespace, you can select from a ton of different templates, you can create blogs, you can create portfolio websites, and you can even sell products. So if you were to ignore all of the crazy stuff around copyright with AI art, you could actually sell prints that you've generated with Diffusion AI directly on the site. So if all of this sounds good, be sure and use my link. You'll get a discount on a domain and or plan, and I'd love to see what you guys make. Okay, let's jump back into Stable Diffusion. This one's gonna get a little bit more complicated, but if I'm able to do it, you definitely can do it. This is called Automatic 1111. This is a GitHub project. It's basically a web UI interface for Stable Diffusion. What this really does is it gives you a lot more controls and a lot more features where you can play around with some really, really interesting stuff. And there's a link down below that will take you to the GitHub project and there are install instructions down here at the very bottom, depending on what computer you're on. And so this pretty much has all the features of the things you've seen before. So this is the text to image. I just did one of Jimi Hendrix and you can see it gave me a result. And just because we have been doing Harrison Ford on pretty much everything, let's go ahead and type him in, hit generate. And I have this set up so it actually gives me an image every certain number of sampling steps. I think it's 10. So I have it set to 20. So I'm getting an image like halfway between the process. And then it gives me a final one here at the end. Okay, so this is cool, but there's been one feature that has absolutely blown me away. And that is this image to image feature. And instead of explaining it, let me just show you what it does. So I'm gonna pull in a screen grab from my most recent video where I walked through building r 2 d with. But then what you can do is you can write a prompt describing what is there as well as kind of what you want it to see. So instead of me just next to R2-D2, I'm gonna do Harrison Ford as Han Solo wearing a jacket standing next to R2-D2 on a spaceship from the movie Star Wars. Now from this point, you're gonna get some other features, especially the CFG scale, which again, if you remember from earlier, the higher you crank that up, the more to the actual prompt it's gonna to try to get. And then the denoising strength. And I'm just gonna show you what the denoising strength does. I'm gonna turn it way down to start out so you kind of see the image that we first get. Pretty much the same thing, but it's starting to do some kind of weird stuff. As we crank up the denoising strength, watch what starts to happen to the picture. So now you're starting to see, oh, kind of here's some forwards in there. Some of the other things are starting to get a little more stylized. So this is basically the amount that kind of the model is gonna take over your image. But you can see as it's starting to go up, now we're starting to get some pretty interesting thing. I'm gonna make sure I've got restore faces clicked on. So now we're starting to get some results. I'm gonna crank my number of steps up and the steps kind of increase the quality or usually you get a little bit better result if you crank those steps up higher. Okay, so this has been what has just been blowing me away. How you can basically take an image that already exists, maybe it's a view and kind of convert it into something else. First off, it's kind of filling in R2-D2. Obviously this isn't exactly R2-D2, but it's like in the style of R2. So you actually have this fully built out versus kind of the skeleton that I've got over here. Obviously I'm turning into Harrison Ford slowly, but even things like this. So like the uh, Inventables logo that's on my actual shirt gets turned into something else. The texture of my shirt is starting to change. This is starting to look more 70s from um, Star Wars, and then especially the background. You can see my tool wall from before is really starting to transform into this like Star Wars style panel. One good thing that this web UI does a good job of as well is it gives you this spot for negative prompts. So you can see I already put in blotchy. Uh, I just don't, don't want to have any blotchy colors, but maybe I don't want him wearing glasses. So if I type in glasses, normally this works. It's actually going to remove the glasses from Harrison Ford. You can see that the glasses took that out and I'm getting a much better result. You also start to get some pretty kind of crazy stuff. I mean, there's like a person back there just staring, which is kind of creepy. But you can see I've just run this a ton over and over again, getting different results.
Now there definitely is kind of a happy medium as I'm pushing this further and further out. You can see some things are looking really good like Harrison Ford's face and then other things starting to fall apart. So especially like hands start falling apart to where if we ran this all the way to one, you're gonna get an image that is less and less like the original one. So that in itself is really, really cool. But you're watching a video which is just a sequence of images. So stuff like this is when it gets wild. Right now it doesn't really work with your mouth, but my hands are moving and my face is changing depending on what I put in the prompts. I've also done this to some past clips from past videos like this R2D2. And if that wasn't cool enough, one final thing. Again, I am going to pull in an image, but I am now coming over to in paint. And what this does is it allows you to kind of draw a mask over a certain area that you want to change. So if you've ever learned Photoshop, maybe one of the first things that you did was replace someone's face with someone else. So you know it's pretty tedious and time consuming to get everything lined up. Well, by doing an in-paint and masking out my face, I can do something pretty similar. And I'm going to hit generate. And there you get a pretty nice result of what would take forever to do inside of Photoshop. And here's more of a stylized version of Harrison Ford. And especially if we crank up the denoising strength, and then you get something like this, which is just fun. Now I'd love to see what you guys make as well as what you think about this type of technology. Obviously this could be used for good as well as bad. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how this plays out in the future. Also let me know if you like these more tutorial style walkthroughs. I'll be sure and make more of them in the future. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.